So Jim Adams here joined by the UFC welterweight champion of the world, Tyron Woodley. He's going to be taking on Darren Till this Saturday at UFC 228. Um, Tyron, I saw you uh, running around the hotel earlier, just getting a bit of a sweat on. Like, how are you feeling? We were locked. And I look like I'm feeling. Look like I was feeling good, right? You're looking good. Yeah, that's how I feel. Good stuff. I mean, um, everyone's talking about Darren's weight. H how easy is it going to be for you to hit 170 tomorrow? Oh, I'm in striking distance right now. Um, obviously, Darren has come in. I guess. Tyra, man. I said Darren. I'm Tyron. Darren's yeah, over there. So when you talk about his weight, you can ask him. I can't vouch for his weight. I can't answer questions on what he's going to do. I'm going to make weight. I can make weight in two hours if I need to. What he's going to do is beyond my control. My question is going to be, Darren's come in as a slightly, I guess, late opponent for you. Like, okay. how easy is it, I guess, for you to prepare for fighters when it is slightly short to notice? We are all expecting you to fight Colby Covington. The second you crack the top five, top seven, you're my radar. So I've already watched him. I watched his skills and his abilities. So I wouldn't technically say a late opponent. It was under my understanding I was fighting Kobe, and then who I was fighting changed, but the radar didn't change. He was always on that radar. I mean, like, we haven't seen you fight for, for over a year as well. I'm sure you've been working hard on stuff. What, what is it you have been working on specifically uh, to uh, make improvements in your game? You know, it's just being an overall work on it, you know, um, every attack. You know, just, just high, low, legs, kicks, elbows, knees, wrestling, just transitions, anything you can think of. i just been putting together a uh, pretty wicked well rounded game plan. I mean, I was asking you yesterday in the media scrum uh, do you, if you felt disrespected just because a lot of the narrative has been about Darren, it's been about his weight, people asking you questions about him. Like, do you feel disrespected that you haven't been given the attention? This is first time. Give him the pressure. Allow him to be overwhelmed with the media, and overwhelmed with the expectation, overwhelmed with the questions about his weight, and overwhelmed with, you know, how do you solve the Rubik's Cube of Tyron Woodley that very few have been able to do. Let him do that. I've been there before. This ain't my first time around. It's my fourth title defense. It's my fifth world title fight. I've been five rounds, three times. He hasn't. So I'm relaxed. I'm putting all my focus in the training, game plan, strategy, feeling good, feeling fresh. Crossing the T's, dotting the I's, making sure my weight's good. That's all I'm doing. Do you feel that's going to be a real difference maker? The experience you have versus him, I guess, coming in fresh off what? His first ever UFC top fight? For sure. You know, if I did not respect his youth and hunger, then I would say no. But the fact that I have and I compensated for that, um, I think yes, it will play a factor. Everyone's saying that you know, uh, you're know you going to use your wrestling in this fight, but do you think that's disrespectful to your, your stand up? Look at the strikers I faced the last time. Did I use it against them? Carlos well, Cano was the last guy I took down. And I only did that a few times. The rest of the time I was struck him in his own game plan. So we'll see. Called a knockout yesterday. Yeah. Is there anything more to that? Like, is there anything you want Feel to say? Is it way. a right hand? Feel the same way. You know, when, I guess when you when you look at the way this pay per view has been built up as well, are you, are you happy with the way the UFC have promoted this fight and promoted you? Yeah, I just take myself away from everything. Shut up, you know, not focus as much on social media. I focused more so on game plan, strategy, and, and training. You know, I did that, and um, I was kind of blind and um, ignorant to all the, the media that was going around it. And I just stayed tunnel vision, focus on the training camp. What's your goal, man? Like, you, you know, you've defended this belt so many times now. You've been the UFC welterweight champ here for a very long time. But where do you want to go after this? Like, do you want to be moving up and down weight divisions? Like, how do you create the legacy which makes everyone believe that you won the greatest full time? It's simple. I just want to be a GOAT. That's it. And I do whatever it takes to do it. Does that involve multiple titles or is it just defending I mean, that? I got guys, I got to take out him first. That's first things first. I can't look beyond that. Once I do that, then I see what's next. It's always the opponent first. Not what's next, not who's after, not division or shifts. Him. When I'm finished with him, then I'll sit down with my crew and team and we'll see what's next for me, what makes the most sense um, for me to continue my legacy. Just lastly, yesterday you said the storyline isn't going to be what everyone thinks it is and you're going to write that storyline. How does this end on Saturday? We'll see. i got to save something. I can't give you everything. Great stuff, Tom. Thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs>